Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Tuesday. Today I'm coming to the weekly Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel reissue in the 226. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's do your workouts, go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Genesis Garcia. If you could only buy from one fashion house for the rest of your life, which fashion house would you choose? All right, all right. Now, even though I will forever, forever have mad, mad love for Louis Vuitton, I'm going to have to go with good old Chanel on this one for sure. And the main reason that is, is because thus far I have not had any issues with Chanel's handbags or small leather goods or their shoes. I haven't had any problems with pop stitches, with varnish, with wear and tear or anything like that. So that does make me feel um, very good about the future. You know, if I was to only buy from one fashion house, but like I said before, it doesn't mean that I don't love Louis Vuitton and it doesn't mean that they don't hold a special place in my heart. It's just that I have had, you know, kind of a roller coaster when it comes to, to various aspects of the brand. Um, but Chanel for sure. However, I will have to say at the rate that they're going with the whole price increases, I don't see a whole lot of Chanel in my future either, if you get what I'm saying, you know, but um, I'm definitely going to have to go with that one. The only thing that I have had problems with in it, when it comes to Chanel is their costume jewelry. That's a whole different subject. I know that we've talked about this many of times, but it's also not a problem because I am never going to buy costume jewelry from them ever again. So I think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, I would love to know if you can only buy from one, from one fashion house for the rest of your life, which fashion house would that be and why? Let us know in the comments section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Christine Santiago. How often do you do spring cleaning or audit how many bags you have and when to stop and decide it's time to let go of it? And when do you think that the bags are already redundant in your collections? Um, all right, so as far as spring cleaning goes, I usually like to go through my bags every three months. Uh, so quarterly ends up working out the best for me. And I've said it before that I do like to reference Instagram because Instagram is a great way for me to catalog which bags I've used and how long it's been since I've used those bags. One thing that I definitely like to keep in mind is when I would normally end up using the bag. So for example, if I have a Demi Azor bag that I have haven't used in nine months and I normally end up using it in spring and summer and we are now in fall or winter that lets me know that this bag um, I have either you know fall, fallen out of love with it or um, it's time to get rid of it and I do try to give it one last hurrah before I decide to sell it again because I don't want to experience uh, seller's remorse or anything like that but to me, it's always, um, that's always ended up working out the best. So by being able to keep in mind when I normally would end up gravitating towards it, and if I just see that it ends up sitting on my shelf, then it's definitely time to let go. Now, as far as bags becoming redundant, if I have two bags that end up serving the exact same purpose, that I use them in the exact same environment, and I notice that I end up leaning towards this one over and over again, even though I like this one, if I still see myself leaning towards this one and gravitating towards it, and in a sense, benching this one, then that also lets me know that it's time to let this one go or to give it one last hurrah before I decide to put it on the chopping block. I also do like to set a time frame for the bags that I haven't used in a while. And that time frame is anywhere from six to nine months. Six to nine months is kind of like my comfort zone because I feel like anything shorter, at least for me anyways, I feel like anything shorter is too short of time to really, uh, to really figure out if that bag is going to work out for me. Sometimes the weather changes and I wanna, uh, I end up gravitating towards it all the time or I might completely fall in love with it all over again type of scenario. So to me, the six to nine months, I feel like that's ample time. Uh, a few seasons have passed by and if I still don't end up using it, even though I might like it, I give it one last hurrah before I decide to sell it. So that's kind of the system that I have, but I would like to know how do you go about spring cleaning or how often do you audit your handbags and when do you know it's time to let one go? Let us know in the comment section down below, but fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Ann MG. Do you ever not buy a bag because no one has it? For example, if I was in the market for a Louis Vuitton Neverfull, I would love the smallest size because I don't carry a lot yet love the look of a tote. 
but would probably never buy it because no one, like no one buys that bag. Um, all right, so I do see this a couple different ways and I am totally going to contradict myself, but I know that some of you will definitely understand where I'm coming from. So this answer might be all over the place, so bear with me. Okay, so I would be lying if I said that I prefer that nobody had the bag because realistically, I do like to know the pros and cons. I like to know the, the ins and outs of a handbag that I'm looking to add to my collection. I like to do extensive research, you know, just because I haven't had the best experiences in the past. Um, so I do appreciate that aspect. And uh, sometimes when I see it everywhere, I'm kind of like even more excited to want to go for it type of thing. Now, I also like having items that people really couldn't care less about, but they end up working out the best for me and for my lifestyle, because that's really what it's all about. If it works out for you, then absolutely go for it, you know, and it's almost like uh, the best kept secret because everybody starts like walking by that item. They're like, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not for me. It's not and it's not very popular but it's almost like you want to say, you know what, if you only knew how fantastic it is, um, I think that you would love it. But because there aren't too many reviews or because there isn't too much information on it, people end up just kind of passing it by. Now, on that same note, uh, this is another part of the whole contradiction. Um, even though I do like to do extensive research when it comes to handbags, and I like to know the ins and outs, as I said previously, there is also something about the whole unknown that I find incredibly alluring. All right, so bear with me, bear with me. And the reason that I say that is because it takes me back to my days before YouTube, to my days before Instagram, or even in general, where, when there weren't too many reviews on handbags, when there weren't a million different threads on all these different websites, and people just ended up going for handbags because they liked the style, because they liked the color, and that was pretty much the extent of it. You know, um, you knew that it was a handbag, you knew that your items would end up going in there, but you didn't necessarily know how it would end up wearing. You didn't know, um, you know, this, that, or the other. And <laughs> call me crazy, but I, I kind of miss that in a sense because now it's like if you look up any handbag, there are a million different reviews. There are a million different threads. You know exactly, you know, what to expect when it comes to that bag, but that whole unknown factor just gives you, it gives me the butterflies. It gives me the butterflies and it just reminds me of a simpler time when buying handbags wasn't so complicated. I don't know if that makes any sense because on one hand I'm saying research, 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 and on the other hand I'm saying, oh, but I kind of like the unknown factor of it, you know, but this is an awesome question. This is an awesome topic and I would love to hear your thoughts. Are you the type of person that prefers to go for well-known handbags or are you the type that likes to go for handbags that no one really knows about or even small leather goods or whatever the case may be? Let let us know in the comment section down below or maybe if you're like me you're a walking contradiction in the fact that you like both or that you see both either way let me know in the comment section down below but I will have to say very quickly when it comes to the Louis Vuitton Neverfull PM I think it is also a beautiful beautiful bag and the only reason why I think it's maybe not as popular um, I think it's because it has to do with the straps the strap drop that it has is not as generous as the others and I feel that had it been a little bit longer I also think it would have been a popular um, a popular you know size but my advice to you would be if you love the bag if you like the size if it ends up working out the best for your lifestyle absolutely go for it absolutely go for it the never full p.m. is a beautiful beautiful bag as I mentioned previously and as long as it ends up working out for you and for your lifestyle that's all that matters so whether it's popular whether it's not popular as long as you love it that's all that matters so fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it Next question from Penelope Nichols. I'm seeing vintage Louis Vuitton bags being sold in large chain department stores. The vaquetta is dark and many look shabby. When I look online at the Louis Vuitton website, I feel like Louis Vuitton is moving away from untreated vaquetta and going towards dark brown or black on handles. Do you predict untreated vaquetta bags will soon be a dated look? This is an awesome question. Uh, it's possible. It's definitely possible. My gut instinct says no, because even though I feel that a lot of people might not be a fan of the oxidizing leather, I personally think that it is a staple. I think that it is a classic characteristic to the fashion house, uh, but I also feel that they might be limiting as 
as to what items do end up having that untreated leather moving forward. I think it was really smart on Louis Vuitton's behalf to introduce a lot more variety when it comes to treated leather than they ever had in the past. Because by going that route, they were able to capture a lot more clients. They were able to capture a lot more sales than ever before. And if people were a fan of Monogram, but maybe they weren't too crazy about the oxidizing leather, or they weren't too crazy about how the bag aged as time went by, uh, the fact that you have more options and now you're not just limited to Damia Ben when it comes to canvas, I think is absolutely amazing. And it's been incredibly lucrative for them, you know? So I don't think that untreated leather is something that they're going to step away from. I definitely feel that it's something that they're going to limit as to what items will end up having it. But I also think that we're going to be seeing a lot more treated leather down the line. We might end up having a lot more colors come through, who knows? Um, but I also don't think it's a dated look. I definitely understand where people are coming from you know, as far as how it ages and how the handles start to look um, a little bit dingy and whatnot. But for me, it's something that I absolutely appreciate when it comes to Vaquetta. I like the fact that it turns that honey golden color, or even if it starts to get a little bit darker, because I feel like the bag tells a story. No two bags are alike. You, you know how I feel about that. I'm kind of a storyteller when it comes to that aspect, you know, and um, it kind of, uh, those beauty marks, I feel that really end up enhancing the bag. But as I said previously, I definitely understand where people are coming from when it comes to treated leather. You want your bag to look as great as possible for as long as possible and treated leather definitely gives you that option. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Do you think that Louis Vuitton is completely going to get rid of the untreated leather? Do you see a lot more treated leather down the line or do you feel that the uh, the untreated leather is a dated look? Do you feel that it? Um, you know, it's not something that people are necessarily going towards. Whatever the case may be, let us in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Jill Mar. Hopefully I said that correctly. What do you think of the Felici? I'm considering it an emprunt. I love the inserts, but I don't think I would use them with the bag. However, I do think that I would use them with other bags. The zippered pouch is completely flat, which makes it harder to put things in. What do you think of the bag and how would you use the inserts? All right, so before we get any further, let me insert a picture of the Louis Vuitton Felici right now. I love this bag. I think it is so incredibly beautiful. It's simple and extremely versatile. I also like the fact that you have a few options to go for. You can either go for leather or you can go for canvas. And whichever avenue people decide to go for, I think both of them have phenomenal price points as well. Now, as far as the inserts go, I also wouldn't use them inside of the handbag because a bag that size, you really want to be able to maximize your space. And I think that by using the inserts, whether you use both or one of them, I think that it really ends up restricting how much more you want to fit in there. So I would also end up using them with other handbags. I know one of the uh, one of the inserts has the credit card slots and the other one is a zippered pouch, as you had mentioned. Both of them, I would end up using them as wallets, you know, because the credit card slots has a little bit more organization and the zippered pouch, again, I would still use it as a wallet. And I know some people have used the zippered pouch as kind of like a catch-all. Um, but I think it really depends on the items that you want to fit in there because if you go to put like lipstick in there I feel that it can get bulky quite quickly So um, again, if you want to be able to maximize your space by using it as a wallet You have a little bit more play with something else that you want to carry when you are using it in a compact handbag whether it is the Felici or a completely different bag, but that's just the way that I saw it when I was playing around with it at the boutique. I was trying out different things and I noticed that once I started to put like a lipstick or a lip balm in there, it was just like a little too, it started to get a little too bulky. So that's something that I prefer not to do, uh, but to each their own. But I think that the Felici is incredibly, incredibly beautiful. As I said before, it's very simple. I love the versatility. You can take off the chain. You can use it as a clutch. You can use it as a wallet. You can use a crossbody on your shoulder. It is a beautiful, beautiful bag. So I don't know if this ends up helping out, but good luck deciding. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Basic T. How do you decide on the next item to buy from your wish list? Um, all right, so when it comes to my wish list, it's not really in order and it's kind of all over the place. The item that I have at the very top is the most expensive and with that one, I'm waiting for a milestone birthday in order to move forward and everything else, like I said before, it's kind of all over the place um, and it seems very chaotic and it's more of a, I'd like to add it to my collection at some point in time, you know? So there might not be a whole lot of um, rhyme or reason to it, but there is a method to my madness. It makes sense to me. Uh, but one of the things that I love to do 
on the wish list, I like to have the updated prices of the items just in case, you know, especially with all of the price increases. Sometimes it happens two, uh, two three times a year. I do like to have those on the side. Uh, it does help me out a little bit, you know, but uh, when it goes from the wish list to actual buy mode, um, I like to bust out that wish list and I go through each item that I would potentially like to add to my collection. And usually one of them starts to make my heart flutter just a little bit louder and I get a little bit excited or actually I get I get very excited. I'm just like, okay, okay, you know, maybe I can move forward with this one and then I can start to research it and all the other good stuff. But before I can even get into buy mode, I have to have the funds for the item. If I don't have the funds for it, then I don't end up going for it. Um, you know, but that's just always been my rule of thumb and it has definitely worked out for me. But uh, yeah, that's definitely what I like to do. So if I have the funds for it, if that item starts to make my heart flutter a little bit more, then I will start the whole research mode and the research, the research mode is, <laughs> is crazy because I'll start, you know, watching videos. I'll read thread after thread. I'll go on Instagram. I'll ask questions. I feel like I get so incredibly obsessed about the item and it's going to sound maybe ridiculous, but to the point where almost every other <laughs> every other sentence that I say has to do with that item that I'm really excited about, whether it's shoes, a handbag, a small leather good, or whatever the case may be. So yeah, <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of my process when it comes from the wish list to buy mode. I would love to know what is your process. What are the things that you guys end up doing when it comes to adding something from the wish list to getting it into your hot little hands? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. And hopefully, I was able to answer it. Next question from Blair Jones: Have you personally ever had a bad experience at Louis Vuitton with their customer service? And if so, what happened? I had an incident happen last weekend, and I feel I'm done with them. I'm so sorry to hear that you had a bad experience and I can definitely understand your frustration. Uh, yes, I certainly have had quite a few bad experiences with customer service and Louis Vuitton in the past. And there are always two that stand out more than anything. The first one being the whole issue with the Mon Monogram Mini Pouchette from what, a year and a half ago or two years ago. And it wasn't so much so about the quality of the item, even though that was what started it all. It was more so how the sales associate just kind of of um, how they handled the situation or the lack thereof. You know, they were extremely unprofessional and it got to the point where it left such a bad taste in my mouth that I avoid that boutique like the plague. And I also have no intention of getting a Mon Monogram mini pushup because of that. You know, at this point in time, maybe that'll change as time goes by. But right now, um, that whole situation, it got very ugly. It got very it escalated very quickly and um, it's something that I don't want to experience you know anytime soon and I know that I should kind of give the benefit of the doubt that maybe it won't happen moving forward but still I just <laughs> I don't want to go down that avenue at the moment so I'm really happy that the Mon Monogram um, card holder everything turned out okay with that one the other incident had to do with a repair I had taken an item in there it was a wallet that needed to be revarnished and uh, they quoted me a price for it they said it would take anywhere from four to six or four to eight weeks so when the item finally came I and I went to go check it out the repair job was absolutely terrible. It was so incredibly messy. The varnish had ended up on the sides of the wallet as well as on the zipper on the fabric. And um, I remember looking at her and I said, this is not right. You know, she took the item and she started to kind of push on the varnish to not make it look as messy. She went onto the computer to see whatever notes they had. And she told me, well, we had originally quoted you, you know, whatever the price was, and now we're not going to charge you. So that's good. And I said, yeah, but still, you know, it's not supposed to look like this. Um, I'm not really happy with the way that it turned out. And she proceeded to tell me, I will never forget it. She proceeded to tell me, well, we're not charging you for the repair. So what does it matter? I was absolutely floored. I know some people might think I'm being such a diva, uh, but I was just like, I cannot believe she just said that. You know, I cannot believe it. It's almost like, well, we're not charging you. It's free. Take it how it is. I, I told her I would rather pay what you guys quoted me and have it done properly, then walk away with something that looks like this. This is not what I had envisioned. This is not what I was expecting, you know, and the fact that they just kind of dismissed the overall quality of how they, you know, how they repaired it. I was just, I was baffled. 
you know so on one occasion I decided to take a step back from the from the brand in general um, especially because I started to have a lot more issues with repairs it was like repair after repair after repair so I took a step back and that actually ended up helping out and it ended up being one of the best things because I was able to navigate other waters when it comes to you know other brands uh, and the other incident I just decided to avoid that boutique in general, you know, just because I didn't want to, I didn't want to deal with it and um, I didn't have the best memory of it, you know. As I said before, I completely understand where you're coming from. So if you do decide to take a step back or if you decide to completely, you know, never go into that boutique again, but hopefully everything works out for the best and hopefully you don't have a bad, uh, a bad experience ever again if you decide to, uh, to stick with a brand. But I would really like to know what is the worst experience that you ever had when it comes to Louis Vuitton's customer service? Let us know in the comment section down below. So fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. And the last question from Sinclair Go. I want to buy my wife the Louis Vuitton Santoge. What do you think about that camera bag? Before I get any further, let me insert a picture of this beautiful bag right now. This is a beautiful bag. You have a variety of different colors to choose from. You also have a different option to go for, whether it's canvas or leather. So I think that's really great. I also find it to be quite spacious, especially for a camera bag. I like the dual zippers. I think it adds a really, really nice touch. Now, personally, this bag is not for me. And there's a few different reasons why I'm not too crazy about it. The first one being that the strap is actually not removable. And I've said it before, that's kind of um, not necessarily always a deal breaker, but I feel that it adds a little bit more play. Now, the on prompt version does come with an adjustable strap which I think is great since you can't remove the strap but the canvas version does not come with the adjustable strap so I think that if they would have also added that to the canvas version uh, it would have been a little bit better the other detail that I'm not too crazy about are the tassels now when this bag first launched I remember seeing the tassels and I was like oh that's kind of cute you know that's kind of cute it gives it a little bit of a different look to it but when I went down to the boutique to check it out I could not stop playing with with the tassels. I felt that I was so distracted by them that I couldn't necessarily focus on any other part of the bag. I know that might be such an exaggeration, but yeah, I'm not too crazy about the tassels. Maybe if they were on the side, kind of like, um, you know, a few other bags that they have, I think that would have been maybe a little bit cuter, but I don't, I don't necessarily like them like front and center. It's not, uh, it's not necessarily for me. So I don't know if this ends up helping out. If you decide to get it for her, congratulations. But fantastic question, and hopefully I was able to answer it. All right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Tuesday q and I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Uh, for this week's lineup, I know that I have been lacking on the second video, but you will see me either Friday or Saturday. But once again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting the bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.